Welcome back to the Chad Hasty Show. News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM KFYO. Joining me on the phones right now, we uh, always like to uh, visit with the uh, folks over at the RNC, see how things are going. And uh, joining me on the program, the Deputy Press Secretary for the RNC, uh, it's uh, hey, it's <laughs> it's Mike Joyce. Mike, what's going on today? Hey, not much. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, always good to visit with you, Mike. Uh, there, there's so much going on. That's why I was left. And I it just there, there's you know with Joe Biden with the Democrats right now. I guess where I want to ask you about first, uh, where I want to go is with uh, Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. Uh, her and Joe Biden are kind of getting in this dust up. Uh, to where, honestly, she seems like the head of the Democrat Party or the Democrat Socialist Party uh, at this point, Mike. I, I mean, Joe Biden's having to to answer to Ocasio-Cortez on climate change and, uh, and other issues. Is this just another sign of where that party is heading to? You know, it's hilarious because when you look at what Joe Biden said in response, he says, well, they should calm down a little bit and take a look at my record. Well, let's take a look at that record. He gave Roughly, I think it was $535 million in a loan guarantee to a company called Solyndra. Uh, the Obama administration at the time called them the poster child for green job creation. That was right before they went bankrupt. Uh, going forward, he gave billions of dollars to increase the production of electric cars and hybrids, but nearly half of that aid went to foreign companies abroad. Uh, when you look at Biden pushing for the Obama admin's investment in the car battery manufacturer, a company, Ener One, that company also went bankrupt. And who can forget that it's done? Hunter Biden has a little bit of a conflict of interest uh, with a, a natural gas company out in Ukraine. So his record, it's a little hypocritical, but we're already seeing in the past with the Obama-Biden administration that when you pump a ton of money into these green energy initiatives, you know, they fall flat on their face. So, yeah, it's, it's comical to watch AOC and Bernie just go after Biden for his record and then having to watch Joe Biden defend his record, you know, Solyndra, who could forget that? I mean, that was just ridiculous, you know. And now that he has to go on the, on the record now and defend these things that happened under the Obama administration, I think he's going to find himself in a little bit of hot water with his base and heading into the early states in the 2020 primary. Well, Mike, you, you've got Joe Biden going out there and saying that uh, during the entire Obama presidency, he's linked himself to Obama without being endorsed by the former president. Uh, and, 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 but he keeps on bringing up Barack Obama's name, hoping to get, you know, remind people of the Obama years. He's telling people he wants to take us back to the Obama years. He wants to take America back to that. And he's also out there saying that the Obama administration had no scandals whatsoever. You just named one. And, and, and Joe yeah. Biden is out there saying there were no scandals at all. Yeah, you know, I think we forget about things like cash for clunkers, uh, Solyndra, uh, fast and furious. I mean, there were, there were plenty of scandals under the Obama administration. That's the bigger issue here is I think when you look at 2020 as a whole, the country is going to ask themselves, you know, do we want to continue forward with President Trump's America first policies or do we want to go backward to the Obama Biden years, the years of stagnant wage growth, the years of, yes, like you said, Chad, scandals. There were scandals in the Obama administration. Um, I don't think the American people are ready for that at this point, especially with the economy as hot as it is right now. And I think we're even seeing that in the midst of, you know, like you mentioned with China and everything else going on, the trade deals aren't what's driving the economic engine in this country right now. It really truly is the president's policies of deregulation, tax reform, these pro-growth policies that are coming out of the White House are making a significant impact on the country right now. So, yeah, I think when you talk about Joe Biden's record, he's going to absolutely attach himself to Barack Obama every chance he gets. Even though he said, oh, well, you know, I asked him not to endorse me. I mean, that's an absolute lie. We all know that the only reason Obama is not endorsing him is because if he were to come out and endorse him and someone like, say, a Bernie Sanders comes out and wins the nomination, that's going to create chaos and a civil war and a bigger war than what's already going on in their party right now. Yeah. Uh, Mike, you, you brought up uh, you, you brought up China and, and this the trade stuff that's going on. I, I know you've probably gotten a ton of uh, inquiries about this, and, and you've seen all the stories that are out there. Uh, obviously, here in Lubbock, here in West Texas, we've got a lot of ag producers uh, who are out here. There have been numerous stories, mainly on the coast, uh, about how farmers are getting apprehensive. They they are they they are uh, getting a little anxious about uh, you know the, these trade deals uh, in in this you know the 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 tariff war, if you want to call it that. Uh, what can you say to to the Trump supporters who are out there, those who are who are going to be dealing with a little bit of a hit? 
uh, when, when it comes to these tariffs. What do you say to them to kind of calm everything down? Sure. Well, I think we need to look at China and say for far too long, they have repeatedly threatened our economic and national security interests. You see them stealing our intellectual property. You see them manipulating their currency to, to have better, uh, a better economic uh, vision for themselves. I think President Trump is saying we're no longer going to allow the U.S. to be taken advantage of by China. And that's why he's imposed these tariffs of 25 percent on $200 billion worth of Chinese goods. And, yes, I understand this is a tough trade war right now. I'm, I, I sympathize with, with the farmers and the ag folks out there in the world. But the trade negotiations are still ongoing. They're going to continue these trade discussions during the upcoming G20 summit. But we really need to look at their unfair trade practices. You know, in 2017, China was named the world's principal culprit of intellectual property theft. They steal our property time and time again. And the first time, the first round of tariffs that we did, I believe it was roughly, uh, I think, last summer, they did have uh, a little bit of an ag relief bill to help provide relief because the White House and President Trump are absolutely aware that, you know, it is hurting a little bit for, for the farmers out there. But, again, we need to stop China from threatening our economic and national security interests, and they keep doing it. But the good news is, is even while China's stealing the heat from our tariffs, the economy continues to soar. Yeah. We've created 6 million new jobs. Unemployment's at 3.6%. First quarter of GDP in 2019 was 3.2%. That's the best first quarter in the last four years. So the economy is still, do- still doing well. But when you talk about trade deals, there is another trade deal sitting there that would significantly help the ag industry out there, and that's the USMCA. That's a done deal. It's ready to go. We need Congress to act and get that done to help farmers and help get a little relief while we uh, finish things up with China. Yeah, Mike, what is what is the status of that? I know you're not in Congress every single day, you know, uh, seeing, seeing what all they're doing. But, uh, you know, there was obviously the big announcement on that. And then we, we haven't heard anything. And especially after the Democrats uh, took the House, we, we haven't heard anything about it. What is the status right now? Yeah, well, if Nancy Pelosi were to put the USMCA on the floor, it would pass with bipartisan support, and that's the issue. We have congressional Democrats that are holding it up because they don't want to give the president another win right now. So, unfortunately, if Democrats would act, they would help give relief to our ag industry in Texas and the rest of the country, but they're not going to do it. They don't want to give the president a win. As we've seen time and time again, they're focused on issuing more subpoenas to anyone involved with President Trump, and they're focused on their Russia collusion hoax still when there are things that need to get done for the American people today. Yeah, and I think people are sick and tired of that Russia thing. I think that the average voter, the average person out there, I think they've been sick and tired of it for a while, to be completely honest with you. And, uh, you know, again, if the, if the Democrats, there are a lot of things that the Democrats would do something and Nancy Pelosi would do something, uh, you know, we, we would have a better country. You look at the border. I mean, the, we, we have a continued crisis on the border that the Democrats refuse to acknowledge. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think the biggest issue for the Democrats is, what are you going to take when you go to 2020, when you have House seats all over the country that Republicans are targeting? And what are you going to tell the American people about what you've done in Congress since you've been in? They've been issuing non-binding resolutions, condemning all forms of hate, even though Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib and everyone else are still spreading anti-Semitic rhetoric around the country. Uh, I don't know exactly what they're going to hang their hats on. I know what the president and Republicans are going to be able to hang their hats on. That's this booming economy right now. That's the record number of judges that were, uh, or the the large amount of judges. We've had over 100 federal judges confirmed. The two uh, Supreme Court justices that we've got confirmed to the bench. Moving the uh, embassy in Israel to Jerusalem, those are promises made and promises kept by the president and Republican leadership. So we have stuff to deliver to the American people. We have a record to run on. The Democrats don't. All their record is is we've just obstructed and resist everything the president's tried to do. Those are things that put more money in your pocket, gotten you a better job, your paycheck's gone up, and they have nothing, you know? So it's going to be tough for them. And I think the USMCA is the kind of deal that we could all get behind. By the way, uh, speaking of the USMCA, Joe Biden's one of the only 2020 Democrats that supported NAFTA. But the renegotiated deal, the USMCA, is a better deal for Texans. It's a better deal for farmers, for ag folks, and they need to get it done. At least if Pelosi were to do that, she would be able to say, hey, you know, we worked across the aisle to get this deal done, but they won't even do that, and it's abysmal. And I think they're going to pay for it uh, in 2020 when we head to the polls. Yeah, I agree. Deputy Press Secretary for the RNC, Mike Joyce, always a pleasure to have you on. We'll visit with you next time. Thanks for having me, Chad. Have a good one. That's Mike Joyce, Deputy Press Secretary for the RNC here on the Chad Eastie Show.